If a couple were standing at the altar and exchanging vows, and let's say they're using some of the traditional vows, and they came to the traditional line, forsaking all others, I am true unto thee alone. But they said it, forsaking all others, I'm true unto thee alone. You'd kind of say, you shouldn't be getting married. We're going to talk about sanctification today, and the word sanctify and the word holy, though they are different in English, are talking about the same idea. One is simply coming from a Latin root, and one is coming from an Indo-Germanic root. And so we end up with two words talking about the same thing. And both of those words are talking about being set apart. Set apart to an individual so that you're special, specially set for that one, and in the same way then separated from others. So when you're taking wedding vows, the wedding should be as, I'm yours, therefore naturally I'm set apart from these others. But I don't care about that because I'm yours. That would be the idea, and that's what it should be. We left off last week in Romans 15 and verse 16, where the Apostle Paul said that he was made a minister or caused to become a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, serving as a priest of, the good, of God's good news. His purpose was that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, and then this expression, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And here's a verb form. It's a participle in this case of this expression, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Set apart. He wants these Gentiles to be set apart. Now, we are set apart in Christ. In John chapter uh, 17, as Jesus is praying to the Father, he says, They are not out of the world, just as I am not out of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word or the word of you is truth. Now, I'm a personal of opinion that this that word should be capitalized. It's not the main point today because I believe that that's a reference. Jesus is referencing himself as the word that you have in John 1.1. 1, 1. And he says that we're set apart by the truth, and the truth is that we're in Christ. It's not just truth in general. It's specific truth that sets us apart. Just as you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes then, notice, I sanctify or set myself apart that they themselves also may be sanctified in or by truth. In other words, we are in Christ. And this is exactly what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.2. He's, talking about, he's writing to the church in Corinth, and he says, to the church of God, which is in Corinth, to those who have been sanctified or set apart in Christ Jesus. Now, these are very important because oftentimes when people talk about sanctified and sanctification, they're talking about what we, what I would call present tense salvation. But scripture refers, actually, and I had to find a few of them because most of the time when you're looking at the word sanctify and sanctification, it's looking at something that from God's point of view is in the past. It's already accomplished by the Lord Jesus Christ. But there are some references to us on a practical level of sanctification. Here's a place where in Christ, this is something that never changes no matter how we're functioning, no matter what we might be doing, that God always sees us as what? He always sees us as set apart in Christ. He never sees us as anything but set apart in Christ. And I think that that's very important for us to understand. This is our status. Now, on a practical level, as he's talking about this in Romans 8, he tells us, and we've looked at this before, it says, for the law or principle of the Spirit, like the principle of gravity or the principle by which something operates, and so he's talking here for the law of the Spirit, of this life in Christ Jesus. He's talking about our status, who we are in Christ. We're set apart in Christ. And all these other things we've seen about who we are in Christ. He says, that has set you free from the law of, and if you remember when we did this back quite some time ago here in Romans, the law of the sin nature and the death. And the law of the sin nature and death, Paul talked about in Romans 7, that is every time I want to do good, the sin nature and spiritual death are present in me and they do what they want. And Paul was frustrated with that. But he says, it's this principle of the Spirit that frees us. And what does the Spirit do? He asks you, quit fighting the sin nature and remember who you are in Christ. In Christ, you died to the sin nature. 
but you're alive to God. And you set your mind to those things. You just don't repeat it. It's not a magic incantation that you can utter and go, I'm dead to the signature, but alive unto God in Christ. It's not the way it is. There's a difference between just uttering it and really being able to say, God says I'm free from that because I died with Christ to that, to this act, to this thing, to whatever it might be. But I'm alive unto him. This is the principle by which the Spirit sanctifies, which is what Paul's asking here, that they might be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, if we go back, or actually, I'm going to save Romans 6 for last, but let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. One of the things that Paul says over here in 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, for this is God's will. This, in other words, and will is, this is what God wants for you, your sanctification. And then he's going to explain that you should abstain from sexual morality. Now, that's not the totality of sanctification, but that in this context is the issue of sanctification or being set apart to God that Paul's concerned with. In other words, if you're set apart in Christ to God, if that's true, then conducting yourself in sexual immorality is inconsistent with that relationship with God. It's inconsistent with all the grace that God has demonstrated to us in Christ. And so he says, that's God's will, to abstain. In fact, he goes on down here in the, in the context here, and he's talking about a number of things. He mentions an is, another issue of sanctification I'm not going to sit on for a minute because it's really loaded verse. But verse 7, for God has not called us to uncleanness, but to sanctification. So these are practical. These are both practical statements about sanctification. The practical outworking of who we are in Christ. And then we come back to Romans 6. And if you remember in Romans 6, and I just want to go back up to verse 11, he says, even so, consider yourselves to be dead, or literally dead ones, to the sin, referring to the sin nature, but alive or living ones to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let the sin nature reign in your mortal body. This is the sin again, so it's the sin nature, so that you obey its lusts. And do not go on presenting your members of your body to the sin nature as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So he's talking about how we function, the things we do. And he comes down here and he says in verse 19, I'm speaking in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh, for just as you have presented your members as slaves to uncleanness and to lawlessness, uncleanness we just looked at a little bit ago over in 1 Thessalonians 4, resulting in further lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness resulting in sanctification. In other words, we come to God and we say, I died to the sin nature, but I'm alive unto you, so I present myself to you. Here I am. How do you want to use me? Use these members. And when you're doing that, there's this practical aspect of sanctification that's worked out. In fact, Paul brings this very thing up again, verse 22. But now being freed from the sin nature, is what he's referring to, and being a slave to God, you have derived your benefit resulting in sanctification. But see, it comes from experience and freedom. And that freedom, as we saw in Romans 8, only happens with, as we relate to our life in Christ Jesus. So when Paul says this statement, I want the offering of the Gentiles to be acceptable, but I want it to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In other words, there's a level of sanctification a person could have by just going, I can't do that. That's bad. I can't do that. That's bad. That's a bad thing. I can't do that. And that's law and that's the flesh and that's not the sanctification God's looking for. The sanctification God wants is that which comes by the ministry of the Spirit, where he says, who are you in Christ? And when your sin nature kicks into gear and the sin nature wants you to do things, the Spirit says, who are you in Christ? Oh, I'm, I'm one that died with Christ to the sinful nature, and I'm one that's now alive unto God in Christ. And we set our minds to those things, and now we are part of this acceptable offering because we're set apart by the Spirit, not set apart by our own efforts to simply avoid doing bad things things. That's law. Operating under grace always involves relating to our life in Christ Jesus. Because it's only as we're relating to our life in Christ Jesus that we truly can have a good day in the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me today.